Hello, everybody. A good nerve Shabbos from <coughs> downtown Moody. And it uh, has been a pleasure to see everybody this week, to learn with everybody this week. It's been a wild week, certainly here in Eretz Yisrael and um, in America and really all around the world. I just wanted to share a quick idea for Arab Shabbos, just to share with you a thought that I have on this very beautiful Arab Shabbos, the Shabbos of Shabbos HaGadol, of the very special Shabbos before Pesach. We asked the question, of course, why is it called Shabbos HaGadol? Why is it called the big, the big Shabbos? It's every Shabbos is a big Shabbos. So one of the answers that, uh, that people like to give is because there were two Shabbos in Europe that the rabbis used to speak. One Shabbos was the Shabbos of um, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and one was the Shabbos before Pesach. And those two Shabbosos were the two drushas of the year. And the rest of the time, the rabbis didn't, didn't necessarily give drushas on a regular basis, but those were two very special Shabbos. And therefore, the Shabbos is called Shabbos HaGadol because it was the Shabbos of the drasha, it was a Shabbos of, of great preparation, of the final preparations moving into Pesach. <clears throat> but I heard an explanation which is amazing. I mentioned in one of my classes as a side thing. I just want to focus on it a little bit. Our rabbis tell us that we know that on this Shabbos, which was the 10th of Nisan in the first year when we left, when we left Egypt, the first Pesach. So on that day, we were told, Mishkul Kulchan Tzayim, we had to take the Paschal lamb, we had to take the sacrifice that we were going to sacrifice four days later. They were going to sacrifice on, um, on Wednesday and that we were going to get ready to eat on Wednesday night and leave Mitzrayim, we were going to leave Egypt on Thursday. So we had to take the animal and we had to tie it to our bed to make sure that it had no blemish, to make sure that it was a kosher animal ready to be able to be slaughtered. And that was, that itself was an incredible thing because we were actually asked to take the God of Egypt and to tie it to our bedpost. Now that could have caused us a tremendous amount of problems. I know Rabbi said a tremendous miracle happened. Not one Egyptian stood up against the Jews. Not one Egyptian complained. Not one Egyptian fetched. Nobody tried to rebel against it. The Jews were able to take their animals and were able to tie it to their beds, get ready for Pesach, and nobody complained about it. Now, while that's an amazing thing, it pales in comparison to what went on with blood and what went on with frogs and what went on with all of the other plagues and miracles that took place in Mitzrayim. This might be an amazing thing. It might be a great moment. But why are we memorializing this day, memorializing this moment, more than any other moment in the Exodus of Egypt, which perhaps was even a greater moment, which perhaps was a greater accomplishment? So the Piazetzno, Zechitzad of of Rachel, said an unbelievable idea. Says the Piazetzno, you have to imagine that we didn't have much to show for ourselves. The Medrash says, we didn't change our name, we didn't change our language, we didn't change our clothing. We held on to some external parts of Judaism, of our culture, of our connection to our people. But we were idol worshippers. We had lost so much of the internal drive to draw closer to God. God comes along to us and he says, you know, I, want to, I want to make you, I want to see if you're a people that are ready. Are you ready now to leave Egypt? Are you ready now for the Exodus? Not because you're in tremendous pain, not because you're suffering, not because you're slaves. The truth is we hadn't worked for almost a year. But I want to see if you're ready because you have a shiva, because you have a drive, you have a desire. You want to move closer to me. You want to get closer to God. So God says to us, I want you to, to, I want to see, I want to test you. I want to see if you're ready. Are you ready to offer your money up to God? Are you ready to take your body and offer it to God? And he commands us to have a brismila, to cut a part of our body off in a way of drawing ourselves closer and attaching ourselves to God. And then he tells us to take our money, to take our animal, to put our very lives in danger and offer that up to God. And on that Shabbos, when we took those animals and we tied them to our beds, not only 
did we fulfill God's commandment? But we made a statement to him that we have an aspiration. We aspire to be closer to you. We believe in you. We love you. God, we want to be your people. And it's not because we're in pain and it's not because we're worried about the oppression and the slavery. It's not because of that. But it's because we aspire to something greater, to living a life with a higher purpose. And on that day, we put our lives in peril. We tied the Egyptian God onto our beds to make a statement to God that when our eyes are upward, we're ready to climb and to fly. It's called Shabbos HaGadol, says the Piazetzna. Because on that day, we became Kedolim. We became giants. We became huge people with aspirations. We showed that we were capable of taking the faith that lived dormant inside and turning it into something real and practical. We showed that we have the ability to be able to push ourselves, to strive, to rise up and to become something amazing. And that's why it's called Shabbos HaGol. That's why we commemorate this moment. Because this was the moment that we became Gedolim. This is the moment that we became giants. This is the moment that we showed that we were ready to become the Jewish nation. And three and a half thousand years later, during the coronavirus, during all the stuff that's going on around us, the world shutting down, the economy shutting down, family shutting down, shul shutting down, everything shutting down, the incredible soul of the Jew, the vitality of the Jew, is striving higher. Look at all of those people that are reaching out to others all of those people that are taking care of others, all of those medical workers, all of the doctors, all of the nurses, all of the Hatsala members around the world, all of the communities that are figuring out ways to keep their communities together, that are just worried about people that are going to be alone for Pesach, people that are going to be on their own for Pesach, people that have a difficulty shopping, People have a difficulty just being without anybody in their houses. And now people are stepping up to the plate. People are rising to the top. They're striving for something greater. They're aspiring to godless. This is the coronavirus Haggadol. This, like Shabbos Haggadol, needs to be celebrated and commemorated with all the craziness going on around us, to see that we haven't lost that desire to aspire, that desire to become something awesome and great, to be able to step outside of ourselves, to achieve godless, to achieve greatness, that's something amazing. This Shabbos is Shabbos Agadol. And though we'll be in our houses, davening, learning, singing, celebrating Shabbos, happy, it's Shabbos Kaidish, with everything that's going on around us. Remember back to three and a half thousand years ago, this Shabbos. And now look forward. Look forward three and a half thousand years from there. And look at what we've become. Look at how great we have become and we're being. We have achieved the message of Shabbos HaGadol. My bracha to everybody is that the Shabbos should be a hail of a beautiful holy Shabbos. And that this Shabbos, the godless, the greatness of this Shabbos should continue on in the days to Pesach. 
over Pesach, after Pesach. And we should continue to strive, continue to aspire for godless and greatness. That greatness should take us from height to height, level to level. Bind our people together. And as we emerge out of this, we should emerge into Yemaisa Mashiach, the days of Messiah, when we see the building of the Beis HaMikdash, Ben Herov Yomenu, Amen.